politics, commentary, entertainment, sports, news, and opinion. Now, here is Steve Malzberg. And these ground operations that they're conducting has to do with a tunnel network in Gaza that as early as this morning was used by Hamas to try to infiltrate terrorists through those tunnels into Israel to conduct terrorist activity and kill Israelis. So put yourself in the position of this country, small and geographically isolated, surrounded by terrorist groups and some unfriendly countries, threatened by the prospect of an Iranian nuclear weapon, and being hit by 1,300 rockets in just the last week. They have no choice but to defend themselves, using all the power at their disposal. All right, folks, welcome to the road to the White House. And uh, that, of course, uh, Florida Senator Marco Rubio. And on today's 10th installment of the road to the White House, we take a look at a possible Rubio candidacy in 016. And joining us uh, to, to do that is uh, Michael Barone, the one and only senior political analyst for the Washington Examiner, renowned polling expert and author. Hello, Michael. Hey, how are you, Steve? Good. Good Thanks for being with us. I appreciate it. Uh, okay, so we heard uh, Michael Barone, uh, Michael Barone, we heard Marco Rubio, uh, you know, defending Israel on the floor of the Senate. It was a, a brilliant speech yesterday. Uh, do you think that he is going to run? Uh, do I think he's going to run? About a 50-50 chance, I think. I think one thing that uh, may give him some uh, cause to uh, be hesitant is, is the fact that his uh, Florida Senate seat is up in 2016. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, you've got a presidential election with no incumbent running. Uh, and uh, as Barack Obama showed in 2008, a first-term senator uh, can sometimes elevate himself to uh, the top position in our government. You talk about uh, the the, uh, the Florida seat being up as an, an, uh, an obstacle or an impediment. Uh, you know, I, I I think that Marco Rubio has so many great qualities and uh, would make should make such a strong candidate. However, I I don't see that he has handled himself that he's being groomed uh, properly or 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 that he is on the road to being a successful uh, uh, presidential candidate at this point. I, I just think that he, you know, I immigration comes to mind, uh, Michael, and then he, you know, he's one of the gang, and then he's uh, for it, and he's not for it, he's wishy-washy, you don't know where he stands. I think that, among other things, have, have hurt him uh, from, uh, for support within the party. Do you agree? Well, I think his uh, role as a major supporter and sponsor of the uh, so-called comprehensive immigration bill, which passed the Senate 13 months ago in June 2013, um, you know, sparked a lot of criticism among Republicans. I think in particular now that we have um, facing us this issue with uh, uh, thousands of um, illegal Central Americans, many of them underage, coming uh, streaming across the border, um, with the public responding that they really ought to be sent back humanely, but sent back to their home country. Um, that puts Marco Rubio on the defensive, uh, certainly with some Republican primary voters. And even in the general election con uh, context, I mean, he's shown, um, you know, great articulateness on a lot of issues. He's been uh, an advocate of uh, a, a tough and assertive foreign policy, as we've just heard, strong support for U.S. allies. Uh, and uh, taking uh, steps to uh, discourage our adversaries or unfriendly powers. That's sort of the opposite of what the Barack Obama administration has done. I think that's in line with a lot of Republicans. But um, And, you know, he's from the um, fourth largest, soon to be third largest state, and the only one of the four largest states that's uh, a target state that's close in presidential general elections. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I think working against him also, despite his strong advocacy on foreign policy, is the fact that he doesn't have much experience in actually uh, conducting foreign policy. Now, that's true of a lot of the Republican potential presidential candidates. Uh, but uh, after uh, six, seven years of Barack Obama, uh, 
who also entered office with a very minimal foreign policy background, uh, that may be a liability rather than and not an asset. And, you know, uh, I think back uh, to um, the speech that he gave. I think it was a rebuttal to uh, one of the president's speeches where he grabbed for the uh, bottle of water. And uh, despite the fact that Marco Rubio has this wonderful story to tell, uh, that, uh, you know, his parents, his upbringing, his values, uh, the whole story is, is fantastic. As so many um, minority Republicans do have that kind of great story, uh, but the media looks for any opportunity to just rip uh, those people, uh, as the media must think of them, uh, whether they're black uh, or Hispanic or female conservatives, they look for any opportunity to rip them to shreds. And they, they took that moment with the water and uh, really, really, you know, just uh, fo missed the uh, great speech and the meaning and the message and just focused and made a mockery of that whole speech because of the drink. Well, I think he has, you know, if he runs for president, he's got an opportunity to go beyond the glass of water. And he's also got a good laugh line, uh, which he has shown that he's capable of exploiting. Uh, you know, Republican presidential candidates have to count on having a hostile mainstream media. That's just part of the game uh, that exists. Um, the, the uh, You know, and I think uh, they will go after anybody that they think has a chance to win. Um, I would expect you'd see a lot of reporters who showed no interest in Barack Obama's past and his associates, associations with the unrepentant uh, terrorist um, heirs uh, will be happy to go down to Tallahassee to try to search for any damaging material that they can find from Marco Rubio's uh, six years in the Florida Absolutely. House of Representatives. Hey, how did he get to be speaker? What kind of deals did he cut? And so forth. Uh, but I think that goes with the drill. Uh, I think that, you know, the greater danger is if you come into this office without a lot of experience. And as I say, I think that uh, at least in terms of foreign policy experience, um, not really not any of the Republican candidates has um, as much experience as, say, John McCain did in 19, uh, in 2008. Yeah, unfortunately it didn't do him much good. Let me ask you this. Where on the spectrum does Marco Rubio fall? Of course, you have, you know, the, uh, the Ted Cruz uh, uh, wing. Uh, uh, maybe Rand Paul falls into that, but he's much more libertarian, especially isolationist more so than, than, uh, than, uh, than Cruz. Uh, you got your Christie uh, wing, if you will. Uh, where, where, does, uh, where does Rubio enter into it? Well, I think it depends on what issue you're talking about. If you're talking about foreign policy, I think Rubio has struck similar notes to Ted Cruz and some of the other Republicans, and quite a bit different from the, I would call it isolationist, though some may object to that phrase, um, approach of Rand Paul. Uh, on immigration, as we've mentioned, he's, you know, supported that uh, uh, comprehensive immigration bill, and that... Uh, uh, you know, it's a position that doesn't look as good as it did, even in a general election context, uh, as it did 13 months ago uh, when he supported that. Um, I think one of the things Republican candidates have to do uh, is to uh, build on what some of these uh, so-called reform conservatives are talking about. Uh, they have to present policies and tell voters how these policies are going to work to enable them to choose the kind of life they want to live, particularly young voters. Um, we've had these times of recession and sluggish recovery. People don't get a chance uh, to find uh, work and causes that maximize their interests and their special talents. Uh, I think that there are some Republicans, including Rubio, who's uh, come across with some um, uh, innovative uh, domestic policy proposals who are thinking in this direction, but I think there's a lot more work for Republicans uh, to do in order to win that presidential contest. People don't like uh, what Barack Obama's brought to them, and that's true of Hispanic voters and young voters, by the way, uh, but they don't know what Republicans might bring, and Republicans haven't fully developed it yet. Rubio's at least embarked on that uh, journey. Uh, at least somewhat, and uh, has made a beginning on it. Michael Barone, always great to talk to you, sir. Look forward to the next time. Have a great weekend, and thank you for being a part of the Road to the White House. 
Thank you, Steve. Good to be with you. Thank you. Michael Barone, ladies and gentlemen, senior political analyst at the Washington Examiner. Um, it's going to be very interesting, and I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the uh, two weeks' worth of installments on the road to the White House. I'm sure we'll do uh, more updated version as time goes on and we get a little bit closer. And we'll also have other specials, I'm sure, uh, related to uh, races that are coming up a lot closer, uh, such as uh, the midterms and the November elections. Uh, but Marco Rubio is certainly uh, a legitimate uh, possibility and a force to be reckoned with should he decide to uh, actually uh, throw his hat into the ring and uh, run for the uh, 2016 Republican presidential nomination. All right, folks, coming up next on the Steve Malzberg Show, it's Gimme Five, and it's only here on Newsmax Television, so don't go away.